So this morning FedEx stopped by and delivered this. This is the Latitude Chromebook Enterprise 5300. It's the two-in-one, so the convertible form factor, high-end Chromebook from Dell. I believe we're working with a Core i5, 16 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of internal storage. But just in general, even though these enterprise-driven Chromebooks are a bit outside of our wheelhouse, and probably for a lot of our viewers, it's outside your wheelhouse too, I know there's some of you that are looking at the premium price tags on these and the premium build qualities, and maybe you're interested in knowing whether or not you should drop that kind of coin on a Chromebook. So this is our first step in taking a look to see if this is worth the money. But before we hop in the box, this video is brought to you by NordVPN. They are the VPN of choice for millions of users, including Chromebook users, because they're awesome at what they do, and that is securing your browsing while you're at home or on the go. If you'd like to learn more about them, go over to chromeunbox.com forward slash NordVPN, and you can get started today. All right, so let's hop in the box and see what we got. First blush, I kind of would have expected a little bit better packaging uh, for a device that costs this much. I believe this one at its discounted price is somewhere around $1,400 to $1,500. So um, I was expecting a little more, um, if I'm being honest, but it's a Chromebook, so I'm not that surprised. And inside, yeah, it's pretty standard Chromebook fare here. Uh, first up, we've got a two-piece charger, it looks like. And this is a review unit, so like, yeah, this isn't packaged up, but you know, pretty standard fare here. Uh, two pieces for the charger. Oh, and it's a barrel charger. That's uh, that's kind of a shame. I'm not sure what the motivation is there because I'm pretty sure these have USB-C with power delivery. So I don't, I'm not really sure unless that can somehow charge crazy fast or something, um, which we won't know until we get it and review it. Um, Additionally, again, these are meant for enterprise customers. Uh, warranty safety stuff. And our booklet, uh, yeah, that's your booklet. There you go, open it up, turn it on. There's the camera and uh, there's the ports. Yeah, pretty standard Chromebook fare here. So uh, I'm actually kind of interested to know whether or not I'm gonna be able to even sign into this thing. I've, a long time ago before Chromebook Enterprise was a thing, I had an HP Chromebook 13. I got off eBay, I think it was, and it was uh, one of those ones that was like designated for enterprise use, and I couldn't sign into the thing. I ended up having to return it. Nobody could figure it out. I couldn't get past it wanting me to sign in with a G Suite account that had specific setups and stuff on it, so hopefully that's not the case here. Again, this, this thing is geared for the enterprise user. It's geared for the IT professional. It's geared for, especially with these, these have Dell's VMware stuff built in. They're, they have sign management stuff. I mean, things that honestly are just outside of my wheelhouse, outside of my full understanding. I am not an IT guy. I've never worked in an enterprise uh, scenario where I would have a computer that would be this controlled by an IT professional. So a lot of this stuff I don't I don't even fully understand and I don't expect that a lot of you watching this will understand either. Hopefully you're probably here to know, is this thing worth the kind of price tag? Because general consumers can buy this and again, I'm, I'm assuming I'm gonna be able to log in. Um, hinge feels nice. Uh, build materials, not surprisingly, feel great. If you felt any of the newer high-end Dell Chromebooks, or not Chromebooks, I'm sorry, Windows PCs, uh, just that nice, uh, I don't know what kind of texture they've got on their aluminum, but it just doesn't pick up a lot of fingerprints, it doesn't look like, but it, it, this thing feels solid. Uh, it's a little chunky, a little thick. We've got uh, some ports around the side, USB-C, like I said, a power delivery. We've got that barrel charger, full-size HDMI port, uh, super speed, USB-A there, USB-A here, Kensington lock, SD card, micro SD card slot, headphone microphone jack. So interestingly enough, we only have one USB type C on here. So maybe that's why they opted for the barrel charger. I don't know why you wouldn't just do another USB type C, but not sure. It looks like we have a SIM tray here as well. So these are Whiskey Lake processors. So a variant of the eighth gen Core i series. So Core i5 again in this one. And those chips have support for LTE. So this device technically, if I got a data SIM, I would assume uh, I could pop it in. Might, for the review, I might try popping my own phone sim in there and just see what happens. Uh, but let's open it up. Again, on the outside too, we have fan ports. Um, you'd expect those. These are U-series processors. These things are workhorses. Uh, and they are meant to be fast and efficient. And so we have U-series fan processors on the inside. So yeah, upon just opening this thing up, hinge feels great. 
build materials just feel solid and you would expect that. I mean, this is an expensive Chromebook. And again, I know I'm, I keep saying we're, we're gearing this thing towards enterprise and you know, large companies just buy these things in bulk and maybe don't think about price tags as much. But again, you as a consumer might be thinking, hey, this is a great different uh, OEM that's making a high-end Chromebook. This might be something for me. And so we want to kind of review it as such. So I can tell you right from the onset, just the, the feel of the keys. Uh, trackpad feels nice and smooth. Everything just feels premium. It looks really good. You know, again, if you're going for that just straight up laptop look. I mean, it, it doesn't look clunky like some of the other uh, enterprise devices we've seen around. Backlighting on the keys. There's this odd uh, button selection it's got on the trackpad. I don't know exactly why they included it. Um, I, for one, really like trackpads that click and you know that that kind of you know two finger click. I'm very used to that now. Mac users are used to it. Windows users are now getting used to it. So I'm not really sure why they included the two buttons, but it has to be something that passes through or works with with Dell's VM solutions and uh, Windows, you know, existing on servers. And and you can even see it in the keyboard here. The keyboard layout is different than most Chromebooks. There's some extra keys and all the buttons up top, instead of just being the regular Chrome OS buttons are function buttons and you have the Chrome OS shortcuts. So this feels a little more Windows-esque in, in the way that it looks and kind of just presents itself in general. So now I've actually gotten logged in in that little break and got my normal stuff set up. So I can confirm you can log in. I logged in with my personal Gmail account. This is not, we have a G Suite account that's connected to Chrome and Box. I didn't log in with that. Logged in with my standard Gmail account and went ahead and tried to log in my other accounts as well that I normally keep on my Chromebook. I went through my normal quick setup that I would normally do. Everything looks fine. Everything's functioning fine. My two-factor authentication came up on my phone. All of those things work exactly like I would expect them to. So. What that tells me is, even though this is geared towards enterprise, I mean, it, it looks like it, it says it on the box. I mean, they're, they're making no bones about that. Consumers can buy this. You could buy it and use it as your personal laptop and you don't have to be working for some corporation. But in general, the screen, uh, I think Dell said that it was shipping with 255 nits of brightness. Screen looks good. Colors look nice and accurate. Very punchy. 13.3 uh, inches with a full HD measure here. So it's 16 by 9, 1920 by 1080, nothing fancy going on there. But the screen looks really, really nice. Uh, colors look great. And what's really cool at a 13.3 inch measure with this kind of pixel density, I, I, don't, I don't see pixels on the screen from here. If I lean all the way in with my nose about six inches from the screen, I can start to make out pixels. And that's actually really great because that's less pixels for you to have to push around with the processor. And it's still going to give you a nice sharp image and it's not going to degrade performance in any way, shape or form. So I think this is a great choice of resolution on this particular device. And, you know, the bezels on the left and right are nice and thin. The top and bottom bezels aren't too bad. You get a nice little lift just a little bit, kind of a la the Asus C434, whenever you open the hinge all the way up. And, you know, it's a convertible, so it'll flip into a tablet mode. Now, granted, is anybody gonna use a tablet that's this thick? Probably not. Uh, but in general, like if you wanna go into display mode, something like this, or go into a tent mode like that, you know, it's useful for those types of things, maybe on a plane or something like that. But in general, I can tell you right now, um, the thing feels obviously insanely snappy really quick, everything's moving around on the screen, super fast, uh, it's jumping into tablet and laptop mode with no issues whatsoever. But we've got to run it through all our normal tests. We got to figure out how good the battery life is. We got to figure out how good performance is, even though I'm not concerned whatsoever with 16 gigs of RAM uh, in the this latest Core i5. It's Like I said, it's an eighth gen, but this thing's going to be a beast. It's going to be a monster from a performance standpoint. So I don't think that's any concern whatsoever, especially not with this 1080p screen. But overall, I can tell you, it just, it feels great. It looks really good, feels nice in the hand. Everything feels sturdy. I mean, this thing's mil-spec rated. So, I mean, it's gonna stand up to a lot of drops and all that kind of stuff. So if you're looking to buy a high-end Chromebook and you want something that can really take the rigors of the road, I don't know, maybe this is something worth thinking about. And in general, for me, I'm gonna have to spend some real time with this device to get this review put together because ultimately we're talking about a really high-end Chromebook with a really high-end price tag. And I just don't know that that's gonna be a right fit for very many people. 
but you might be the person it's a good fit for. So with all that being said, if you are interested in this device and want to know more about it, you're going to want to subscribe to the channel right down below and you're going to want to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted when we put the review out and other you know, Chromebook videos just like this one. And also, while you're down there, hit that like button if this video's helped you out whatsoever. But guys, that's it for this one. Until next time, we'll see you.